the February protest by Canadian truckers. Mm. They're protesting COVID restrictions. Some of them block border crossings. Some of them mm -hmm. snarl the capital city of Ottawa. A quotation, then a video clip. Here's the quotation. You, in a message you taped for the protesters, I'd like to commend all of you for your diligence and work on accomplishing what you have under trying conditions and also for keeping your heads in a way that's been a model for the entire world." Close quote. Now the clip. It has to stop. The people of Ottawa don't deserve to be harassed in their own neighborhoods. They don't deserve to be confronted with the inherent violence of a swastika flying on a street corner or a Confederate flag or the insults and jeers just because they're wearing a mask. That's not who Canada, who Canadians are. All right, so here's wow. the here's I can the hardly even look at him. Here's, <laughs> here's the first question. How can discourse in a great democracy have become so polarized that Jordan Peterson and the Prime Minister look at exactly the same set of events and come to opposite conclusions about them? Well, he's lying, and I'm not. So that's a big part of the, that's a big part of the issue. I don't believe that he ever says a word that's true. From what I've been able to observe, it's all stage acting. He's crafted a persona. He has a particular instrumental goal in mind, and everything is subordinated to serve that. Why? So, What's the motivation? Uh, the same motivation that generally that's generally typical of people who are narcissistic, which is to uh, be accredited with moral virtue in the absence of the work necessary to actually attain it. All right. From, He's playing a role. From You know, the swastika yeah. thing, it's like really it's just about Canadians, really, we're going to be worried about Nazis in Canada. Because I had protests, for example, where people accused me of attracting Nazis. First of all, that just isn't a thing in Canada. There isn't a Nazi tradition. And I don't know anyone in Canada who's ever met anyone who's met someone who was Canadian who, and who was a Nazi. And so that's just a non-starter. And so when that sort of thing gets dragged into the conversation, right off the bat, you know, the Canadians shouldn't be subjected to the inherent violence of a swastika. First of all, it's not even obvious what that swastika was doing there. There's, a, there's reasonable evidence to suggest that the person who was waving it was either a plant or someone who was making the comment that that was what was characteristic of the government, mm. not of what they believed. Now, no one knows because the story around that event is messy and uh, it's not like there were credible journalists who were going in there to investigate thoroughly. But to use that uh, and the Confederate, the Confederate flag issue is exactly the same thing. You know, the story in Canada, the, the, our Prime Minister implemented the Emergencies Act, and so the question was why? And so I went on Twitter when this was trending and read at least 5,000 Twitter comments to try to get a sense. These were people who were supporting Trudeau in his application of the Emergencies Act. And I was trying to figure out, okay, well, what, what do they believe is happening? And the story seemed to be, and this is as far as I can tell, and maybe I'm wrong, mm -hmm. uh, the story was something like, Make America great again, conservative Republicans on the, you know, pretty far right were attempting to destabilize Canadian democracy. And so my question was, well, what makes you think they care, first of all, about Canada and its democracy? And second, why in the world would they possibly do that? You need a motive for a crime like that. And that was at the same time the CBC was insisting, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, which is subsidized by the Liberals to the tune of $1.2 billion a year, was insisting that most of the money that the truckers raised was foreign financed. If right. it wasn't the bloody Russians, then it was the American Conservatives. And so that all turned out to be a complete lie. And so, fine, it's uh, Republican right-wingers trying to destabilize Canadian democracy. Why? No one has an answer for that, because what's in it for them? And then, okay, three days later, the Emergency Act was lifted. And I thought, okay, now what are they going to make of that? What could the possibly be the rationale for that? And the rationale was, well, that just shows you how effective he was. We had this coup. 
ready to go that was financed by Americans, apparently, and our Prime Minister acted so forthrightly that we only needed to be under the strictures of the Emergency Act for three days. It's like, okay, I don't even know what sort of world I exist in where those things are happening. Oh. So, and then Canadians, why do Canadians buy this to the degree they do? And I think they're faced with a hard choice, because in my country, for 150 years, you could trust the basic institutions, you could trust the government, it didn't matter what political party was running it, you could trust the political parties, right, from the socialists over to the conservatives, the socialists were mostly union types, and they were trying to give the working class a voice, and honestly so, um, you could trust the, the media, even the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation was a reliable source of news, you, None of that's true now, and so Canadians are asked to make a hard choice, or were in the truckers' convoy uh, situation, and the choice was, well, either all your institutions are almost irretrievably corrupt, or the truckers were financed by, like, right-wing Republican Americans. Well, both of those are preposterous. You might as well take the one that's least disruptive to your entire sense of security. And so I think that's what Canadians did, mostly. All right.